And uh, a little bit about some MMA stuff is uh, like I was crazy with MMA. Like I didn't see it as a sport. I was just seeing it as a street fight. It didn't, uh, you know, it didn't become mixed martial arts until like until you know my career was just about over. My last fight was I think in two thousand eight. You know, I fought. Uh, I fought. And I, this is funny, too, because everyone always talks about, oh, your record sucks. My record is 31 wins, 26, loss, uh, 26 losses, and three draws, okay? Not all my fights are on the are on the Internet, okay? And people are going to say that, okay? I was fighting before they were keeping track of the fights, before there was even a body um, repre you know, representing MMA and trying to keep track of the records and stuff like that. And... and a lot of my pro fights on my internet record are showing up as amateur, okay, because it was legal in almost every state. So in order for me to fight pro in some of these states, I got paid for all my fights. The only way for them to pay me would be is if I if I signed a thing saying I fought amateur. So a lot of times when the athletic commissions were getting involved, it was it was a it was a mess, okay? There was some states that had a lot athletic commission, most of them didn't. So you're going to all these different states to fight. So it got to the point where the athletic commission was cracking down. So they're like, you can't fight pro and then go into another state and fight amateur. We weren't really fighting amateur. We were just saying we were fighting amateur because they were trying to, they were trying to uh, just you know fly low under the radar for the for the law because you know the. For that state, the law might have said you're not allowed to pay people, you're not allowed to have professionals fight, but you can have amateurs fight. We got paid, okay? They just did it in the hotel room, give you cash and call it a day. So a lot of my fights, you'll see I jump back and forth from amateur to pro on MMA.TV, the record keeping thing. And that's, I, I was getting paid for those amateur fights. I'm just telling you. So, and, uh, and also, I, f I could fight at 135 pounds, and there really wasn't a lot of people around at that weight class. And some of them that were wouldn't even fight me. So I was, I was uh, on the average fighting, on average probably at 155 pounds most of the time. Okay, so that's two weight classes above what my fighting weight was at. So how good do you think, like, uh, like? Like people think Conor McGregor is really good, okay? How Gr Conor McGregor fights at 155 pounds. He might even have fought at 145 before. Uh, I can't remember, but I think he fought at one, 145 before. So imagine if Conor McGregor fought most of his fights at 170. What do you think his record would be? And then sometimes if he fought at 185. I fought a couple guys at 185 pounds. I actually won those fights. Two of those fights, I, I lost one of them. I got beat up real bad this one. Fought this wrestler from Michigan. I can't remember his name, but we were talking major shit. And uh, I thought I could beat him. I was, I was overconfident. I just thought as long as I didn't have time limits, I was making up all kinds of rules. I'd make up rules. You know, the, the show would have three five-minute rounds, and, and I'd be fighting a guy like three ten-minute rounds. It was crazy. I, I bet this his coach... Uh, Coach a hundred bucks that I could make it out of the first round, and uh, <laughs> I won the hundred bucks. But then it got stopped after that. Uh, but uh, so, and I also fought at the time. Uh, I fought the uh, hundred thirty-five pound. I, I fought the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Okay, at that time that was Miguel Torres at one hundred thirty-five pounds. I think when I fought Miguel, I was only the second or third person to make the distance with him. His coach i think it was carlson gracie senior he had like some million dollar fucking bet or something like that that you know if anyone could beat this guy in a street fight like a no hold barred valet tudo fight he'd give you a million dollars and i know probably a couple people tried it but uh you know but that's that's how much confidence carlson gracie had in him and at the time miguel torres was the pound for pound champ they didn't have that weight class in 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 uh, the UFC, so the fact that a guy at 135 pounds that they didn't have that weight class in the UFC was considered a uh, full contact fighter website was the one that was kind of the news website. They were trying to do a lot of the rankings and uh, and the record keeping, and they were 
They had Miguel Torres as listed as the pound for pound best fighter in the world. And if you even look Miguel Torres up, he's probably I think I think they have him listed at the at the as the third best ever at that division. Okay, so at the time I fought Miguel Torres, I was paid eight hundred dollars. I I went the distance with him. Okay, and and I did pretty good against him. Like I feel like if I I had a little better strategy, I think I would have beat him, but he beat me. I lost the decision, so I went the distance with the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world. So in today's standards, that would be like me going the distance with probably John Jones, okay? So that's the level of fighter I was. I was definitely top five in the world, maybe, uh, you know, as I st started to go towards the end of my career, top ten. I was definitely one of the best fighters in the world. I did crazy stuff. I also fought uh, Roger Herta. He was the first uh, UFC fighter to be on uh, Sports Illustrated magazine. I, I did a crazy fight with him. So I agreed to fight this guy, Tommy Lee, in Chicago. Okay, and Tommy Lee was in the w, WEC. He was one of the best fighters in the world at the time, too. He he trained with that, uh, oh, that real crazy guy in the UFC. Uh, fuck. I can't remember his name. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> but so I fought I I was I agreed to fight this guy Tommy Lee, okay? And I was fighting to pay my bills then, man. I was just taking any fight to make money and I loved fighting so it was it was cool. So then uh, I seen that Monty Cox was looking for a guy to fight Roger Herta because someone got hurt or someone bailed. So I called up Monty Cox. I said, "Hey, I'll fight. Uh, I'll fight Roger Herta." And I think he only paid me like five hundred bucks or something like that. But anyway, so he's like, "Yeah, okay." And uh, he's like, "The fights. I think it was in Minnesota or Wisconsin." And he said, "I'll fly. You know, I'll, I'll get you on a flight. It'll pick you up in in Cleveland, and then I'll fly you back." I was like, "Hey, can you do me a favor?" And he's like, "What?" I said, "Can you fly me into Chicago instead of flying me back to back to Cleveland?" And he's like, "Why?" I said, "Well, I'm I'm taking a fight Saturday, so I was fighting Roger Herta on Friday, and then I was fighting Tommy Lee on Saturday. So you know, and everyone knows Roger Herta is a beast. Okay, so." And, and Tommy Lee's a beast, too. So I was fighting these two guys back to back. And he's like, are you serious? He's like, that's going to be pretty rough. You know, I can understand if it was the same day. But that might be tough if uh, if you got to go the next day. You're going to be sore. I'm like, I'm all right. I was like, I'll, I'll deal with it. He's like, okay. He's like, it ain't no problem with me. You're fighting my guy first, so I don't care. But then the promoter from the, from the Chicago fight... He found out I was doing that, and he called Monty. He's like, "Man, what the fuck, dude? You know what I mean? You, you know, why did you let him? Why are you letting him take that fight? You know, blah blah blah." And Monty's like, "Hey, man, look, I need someone to cover my fight, and he's fighting my guy first, so I'm not too worried about it." But you know, Dan's a, you know, Dan's a man of his word. If he says he's going to be there to fight that dude, I just, uh, I just have to assume he is. And he's like, "Oh, fucking Christ!" So. I flew to Wisconsin or Minnesota, I can't remember which state it was, and uh, fought Roger Herta, and the ref stopped the fight in the first or second round, I can't remember, total bullshit stoppage, I actually think I caught him, like, it was funny, and, and, uh, and, and I also fought Roger Herta at 165 pounds, too, okay, which is, which is bullshit, we were supposed to fight at 155, and then I found out that he's having trouble making weight, so we fought at 165, I was fighting Tommy Lee the next day at 145, so I had to make weight for 145, too, because, you know, it was same day weigh-ins, so I, I was, uh, you know, cutting a little bit of weight, so I, I, he had a huge weight advantage over me, you know, if Roger Herrick is cutting weight to make 165, that means he probably, when we fought, he was probably like 185 or 190 or something like that, maybe almost 200 pounds, and I'm still right around 148 pounds because I got to weigh in the next day, so uh, I'm pretty sneaky on my southpaw, I he, he threw this jab, I slipped this jab, and I threw this straight left, man, popped him right in the face, and I just saw him get fucking angry as fuck that I caught him with that, and he, and he kind of rushed me, so instead of like, instead of trading blows with him, I, 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 I just sat down to my back, and I hooked him, I got him in this heel hook, and I had it tight, and I'm trying to crank it, and he's standing up, he drags me from one end of the cage to the other, Finally gets out of this heel hook. I was so close to heel hooking him. 
and he gets on top of me and uh, I'm in half guard so I'm kind of working like I got you know I'm I'm safe I'm really tight underneath him and I'm trying to work this sweep but I was working it but he's punching me like on the top of the head the side of the head it wasn't hurting at all it wasn't hurting at all and the ref literally stopped the fight I I was I looked up at him like what the fuck dude what, what are you doing He's like, oh, I thought, you know, you weren't defending yourself. Yes, I was. I was getting ready to sweep them. I can't, I can't block punches that are landing on the top of my head and sweep them at the same time, dude. He wasn't even hurting me. But I was like, whatever. I probably wasn't going to win anyways, and I was just doing it for the money. So I was just like, whatever, dude. That's bullshit. It is what it is. So that was a bullshit stoppage. And then I went and I... Uh, I flew, uh, got up the next day, early morning, flew to Chicago, got picked up at the airport. I had uh, some people coming to meet me to work my corner and stuff. So my friends drove from, from Erie to Chicago to pick me up at the Chicago airport, drove me to the weigh-ins, and, you know, I was fine. I didn't get, a, I didn't even get hurt during that Roger Herta fight, nothing, not even a mark on my face. And, uh... Weighed in and uh, fought Tommy Lee. Did good against him, but just, you know what I mean? He just was just a little bit better than me. I lost a close decision to him. Uh, that was a, So that was like one of the wild times, you know. So I fought Miguel Torres. I fought Roger Herta, Tommy Lee. I also fought Jeff Curran, who was, uh, who was one of the best fighters in the world at 135 at the time, too. Lost a close decision to him. Uh, I'm trying to think... Uh, Oh, uh, Phil Johns. I fought Phil Johns. He was one of the first guys to fight at 155 pounds in UFC. And he was, uh, I fought him at 155 pounds too, okay? So remember, that's two weight classes above what I'm supposed to. And I, I knew he was bigger than me, so I always tried to get longer rounds. I was in super good shape. My conditioning was, was super good. So I would, we agreed to a, 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 I think it was, five or six five-minute rounds. So I fought him. The fight lasted 30 minutes. I lost a decision to him. That was, that was, a, that was a good fight. I fought, I fought a lot of tough dudes. Um, I fought uh, Donnie Walker. He was a UFC vet. I got totally hosed. I'll end up posting that video one day on YouTube. I got totally robbed. I beat his ass all three rounds. One judge scored it, scored it 30, uh, 28 in my favor because we fought three rounds 30 28 and the other two scored it like 29 28 total bullshit i beat his ass i fucking killed him like there's the only way i could have did any more to him was if i literally stopped his heart got robbed with that almost uh was scheduled to fight jason Dent. he was on the ultimate fighter reality show fought in ufc he did really good he's he's fought a lot of tough dudes he's a super tough dude was supposed to fight him like three or four times and then just something happened, you know, was, you know, I got injured, he got injured, shit didn't happen, I was scheduled to fight him a bunch of times. Fought 60, 60, uh, 60 MMA fights, that's how many MMA fights I had. And, uh, I was learning a lot of times during the fights, you know what I mean? I didn't really have a trainer, so I was trying to just figure it out as I was going, I was just addicted, I was just addicted to fighting.